two people prohibited one another from driving benefits from each other. Example, synagogue in a community built by community. It belongs to the community. But there are situations that people not get along and therefore can one party prohibit another party from using s the facility. Examples. Question that posed to the late Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, Zechat Tzadik Libacha, was the one of the prominent leader of the um, um, Orthodox American Jewry. The question was asked about community who build a mikveh, a ritual bath. They went to a people and asked for donation, yet the um, people in the community did not, it was some people did not participate in that. They built the mikveh, and then the uh, people who organized asked him if those people who refused to partake with the expense, if they, if they can forbid them or put the restrictions like you do sometimes in exclusive clubs um, that it will be used only for those people who contributed to the mikveh. Similar question posted to the late Rabbi Frank who was the chief rabbi of Yerushalayim when people using a talit of the synagogue uh, they call up for Aliyah and they use the Talit. Does that mean that they need to make a bracha on that Talit separately since that Talit belongs to the public, to everyone, it's not individual? In short, Rabbi Feinstein said that we have to differentiate between a person need to purify himself, herself, or the sharing with the building. He said, the fact that someone did not share is one wrong, but two wrong doesn't make it right. In that sense, the, the community cannot prohibit Klal Israel, other people. They can charge for using the building, but you cannot put a boundaries against the fellow from using the mikveh. So here we are. We're going to study today page 48. We start with the Mishnah at 47b, dealing with a public estate while people prohibited one another from using public estate. Hareini alecha cherem. One person, let's call him Reuven, he said to Shimon, I am prohibited you from using um, anything for me. It's like um, boundary. So, but uh, the cherem applies to anything that is consecrated for the temple services, such as maintenance, such as a, a consecrated item for the temple, etc. Hamudar asu, the person who declare this um, vow, uh, uh, drive benefit from the other, is prohibited. But the other party can use. So it's just one way. However, harei at alaycherem, if he said the other way around, you are cherem prohibited toward me, meaning he prohibited himself from driving benefit from his fellow, from Shimon, Hanoder Asu, meaning Reuven prohibited to drive benefit from Shimon, yet Shimon allowed to drive benefit from him. Harei alai, alecha ve'at alai, but if he goes both ways, I, meaning Reuven, prohibited myself toward you, Shimon, and I prohibited you to drive benefit from me. So he goes across both ways. Therefore, Shnehem Asurim, 
Both of them are forbidden to derive benefit from one another. Next, dealing with Olei Bavel. Olei Bavel meaning when they, uh, the people left Babylon, if you remember we talk about Ezra the scribe and the time of building the second Beit HaMikdash, the second temple. So they build some um, entities that belongs to the public. Ushnehem mutarim and both parties allow to drive benefit bedavar shel olei bavel anything that ascended from Babylon, which means something that belongs to the public, and none of the people has an ownership in a sense of partnership. For example, you have a concept in these countries, the co-op. You go to New York City, you see some building that the moment you buy even a small apartment, one bedroom, you can buy it in a matter of co-op, which means you have certain X amount of percentage in the ownership of the apartment. So in a sense, you can be a partner. Here, since it was built for people who ascend to Israel from Babylon, and it was built for quote-unquote communal need, so therefore it's not a domain, a private partnership of everyone, unlike kibbutz, unlike co-op, etc., etc. This is something that we consider the same as ownerless, as of care, which means that every single one can use it. It's a public, public building. And uh, we call it by definition, the way that um, we take it, the Tosfot and others say that uh, Bab Babylon, uh, people who are sent from Babylon, because that was the goal when they did it, for the need of the people. So if someone prohibited another fellow from using that estate, then 48, Va'asurim bedavar shel ota hahir. It is prohibited for um, each of them to have any manner of benefit for something that belongs to the public, to the city. Why? Because it's something that is jointly owned by everyone as a partnership. So therefore they are partake of that. And therefore, it's incorporated with something that is public. Example, synagogue. Example, bathhouses, etc. So those, it's not have care. It's not something that belongs to everyone. It's in the ownership of the people of that community. It's a communal. So therefore, everyone is partake, is a partner. So, therefore, he derived benefit for something that he has a share. So, therefore, you cannot, if it's a prohibition involved, you cannot use it. And, um, because, in a sense, it's a partnership. And give me an example that the public is not partner with this, and they cannot prohibit it on each other. Kegon Har Habayit, for example, Temple Mountain, Veha Azarot, and the courtyard of the temple, Veha Bo Shebeemtza Haderech, and the, the cistern, the pit, at the middle of the way, which means the pit that it's on the way, ascending from Babylon to Israel. And give me an example of something that it's in a partnership that everyone can prohibit it on others. Kegon Har Chava, for example, the, the, the public square, the bathhouse that belongs to that city, 
ובית הכנסת, דה קומיונל, סינגג, והתיבה, והספרים, and the, um, the ark, the, the place that we have the Torah scrolls, and the, um, the Torah scroll themselves. Um, in general, there are other explanations to those definitions based on the Mishnayot we study in Tracte Ta'anit. The way Tosfor, the Ran, said it can be also sacred books that use, um, etc. Now, Beit Yosef ask a question. Mitzvot lav not nitnu. The mitzvot, it's not for the purpose of driving benefit. So how come you use this here? So the Taz said that here you see that there is a Hana'a Gashmit, there is a materialistic joy with study Torah. So therefore Reuven cannot derive benefit from a state of Shimon. Now we, we, we are speaking about certain situations that um, someone who prohibited benefit from another, but he can write a letter or a contract that he take his portion in the public estate and give it to someone else. And therefore, the other party can use it as needed. Vehakotev chelko lanasi. You have the, the head, the president of the community, and a member of the community writes a document to the president that he acquire his part from the city to the president, and therefore that fellow that prohibited to drive benefit have his portion get from the president but not from the individual whom he is prohibited to drive benefit. Now, the meaning of the Nasi, the president, it's a matter of, the, of disputation. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Echad Kotev La Nasi, Ve'echad Kotev La Ediot. A person can write either to the Nasi, the head, one who writes it over to a just a common fellow. Ma ben kotev la nasi le kotev la idiot. What's the real difference between a fellow that writes something that transmitted to the head versus a common person? Shea kotev la nasi ein tzarich lezakot. Le idiot tzarich lezakot. So you have a concept that's called kinyanim, conferring possession, meaning, if you remember, when you sell the chametz, I ask you to lift up a handkerchief, right? So there is a concept that when you transmit it, something between two parties, you need to have ma'ase kinyan, you need to show a matter of acquisition. So when it's come to nasi, to the head of the community, you don't need to do that, you don't need the kinyan versus to a common person, the only way to have hafka'at isu to remove that boundary of prohibition has to be by manner of acquisition. So therefore the Mishnah used the term that one write his portion to the nasi. Vachachamim omrim. However, the sages said, Echad ze Regardless if someone writes it to the Nasi or writes it to a common person, they need to have zikayon ma'asekinyan, meaning to lift up, to do that matter of transaction between the, the giver and the receiver of the gift. The reason that they use this word benasi, it's because that's the common situation that da time, that uh, people, since the nasi is the, in a way, the leader or the head leader of the community, so therefore, people are more comfortable 
to write it to him instead of writing to a fellow congregant. But there is another point here. In Israel, they have a different location, a different stigma over certain people. You have people who live in Galilee, and you have people who live in Judea and other places. They have, the Galilite have a certain reputation, soon as you see what it's all about, okay? Rabbi Yudha Omer, En anshei Galil tzrichin lichtov shekava kadfu avotehen al yedehen. So they said the people of Galilite, they need, they do not have to write the portion over to the nasi, to the head, because their ancestors, their father, already wrote for them. Why they vote for them? So soon you see the reason um, why, why they did it. Now, the Mishnah teaches us so far that when you have two people that prohibited driving benefit from one another, they are prohibited to use something that belongs to that community. And then right away, the Mishnah said, if someone writes his portion to the Nasi. So what do you derive from that? That someone who writes his portion to the Nasi is incorporated with the previous statement of things that prohibited to drive benefit when one prohibited the other. Amai mitzal, what is, the, why is it is, is it prohibited? We say that it's already written his part to the Nasi. The Rosh asked. Amarav sheshet hachekatani. This is the meaning of the Mishnah. Umata kanatan. Those individuals that get, for example, in fight and prohibited things one against others, right? Yiktevu chelkan la Nasi. If they have a need, soon you see examples <coughs> why these people they have needs. So they need to write their portion over to the Nasi. And therefore they are allowed to use something that belongs to that community. Now we have a part here in parentheses, I'm just reading it. רבי יהודה אומר, אחד כותב לנשיא ואחד כותב לאדיוט, ומה בין כותב לנשיא לכותב אדיוט? הכותב לנשיא צריך לזכות, והכותב לאדיוט צריך לזכות, ואנחנו אומרים, אחד זה ואחד זה צריכים לזכות, ודיברו בין נשיא אל אבא עובד. אוקיי. רבי יהודה אומר, אין אנשי גליל צריכים לזכות. We just said in the Mishnah, that Rabbi Yehuda holds that people in Galilee did not need to have this matter of acquisition, some call it lichtov, some call it lezakot, which means, you don't need to acquire it, to transmit it to Nasi, their portion of the city. Shekvar katvu avotehen al yedehem, because the ancestors already wrote it for them. Tanya Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Anshei Galil Katranin, the people the, of the city of Galilee, they are what? They are people who are quarrelsome, people who are argumentative, angry people, people who, who in some rabbis call it, enjoy seeing blood, enjoy seeing fights. Do you know anyone like that? I look at your faces, I'm not sure. It's too early in the morning? I know way too many people. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know anyone like that? <coughs> yes? Okay. So what happened is, because they are like that, and Shei Galil Katranin you, they are very difficult, argumentative people, angry people. They are you know dream, <laughs> very often they get angry, and when they get mad, guess what? They prohibited driving benefit from each other. So the ancestors saw their pattern of behavior, and what did they do with them? Amdu avotehen vechadvu chelkehen lanasi. So the ancestors, they, their forefather arose and wrote the portion of the public property over the nasi. So, in a sense, <laughs> yeah. So it's not prohibited the communal property. Hold yeah. on a their ancestors wrote something because of what they did? 
Okay, so the idea is... Or the ancestors anticipated that they were going to do that. The, the ancestors knew themselves. And knew that it was, so they anticipated that the future And it's perpetuated. Yeah, okay, it's the people. way it's written, it sounds like, it sounds like they, the ancestors, Bishamayim, you know, retroactively did <laughs> Their goal is the, what they tried to convey to us, that yeah. they, they, they already foresee certain patterns. No, no, I understand that, yeah. So there are a few derivatives from that. First is the Cherem de Rabbeinu Gershom. Rabbeinu Gershom wrote certain bands, certain rules. One of them Rabbeinu Gershom or Agola wrote that a person cannot prohibit another person his portion in the synagogue. And it's sensitive. Some synagogue, for example, you have a life seat. You have a seat. And s you, you walk in and somebody else use your seats, right? Mm -hmm. So I knew many communities, they have a rules. Listen to this. They p I saw some shoes put a sign. If you come late to service, if it's Friday night by Lechadudi, if it's Shabbat morning by Nishmat Kol Chai, right? If you pass that time, whatever it is, it's like half an hour late, you lost your right over your seat. <laughs> Right? You have it in some shoes. But basically, um, uh, it's one of those stories that um, ask based on this was a community that have a land. And when they hired a rabbi, they asked him, they gave him a piece of land, and they said, this piece of land you can build for yourself a house for you and your family. Later on, things change, you have a new president, you have a new board, you have whatever it is, right? And they wanted to take from the rabbi the land. Why is that? It's because it took him too long to get the city approval, to get all the papers to build his house, either because of connection, money, etc. And meanwhile, the new management said, we want to do something else with that place we want to build a gym or whatever it is. And the rabbi went back and he said, I prohibited it for you to use it like a korban, like an offering. That was the old days. Mm -hmm. The question is, how far you go with this type of issues? Anyway, en chadash ta chadash is nothing new under the sun, and those issues happen even almost 2,000 years ago. Next, Mishnah. The Mishnah continue with the situation that someone prohibited driving benefit from his estate, but by taking part of his estate. Here we're going to deal with painful issues, <coughs> including <coughs> issues of inheritance. Just an overview. Inheritance, people misconstrue the halakha sometimes. Parents can give matana mechayim. While they're alive, they can give a gift to their children, son or daughter, or whoever they wish to, as a gift during the lifetime. The, it's their estate and it's their choice. There is a different concept, which is inheritance after they're no longer among the living. Sometimes, soon you see, parents will have a, for better, uh, uh, unpleasant or rotten or whatever it is, child, and they want to disinherit it in part or in full certain children. Here, soon you see example of the complication with that. First case. You have Reuven and Shimon. One Reuven prohibited Shimon from driving benefit from him. But Shimon is so poor that he has no money to feed himself. Okay? So this Reuven feel bad, feel compassion for this indigent Shimon. And he wants to find a way to give him. So what did he do? Not no le acher Reuven needs to give the gift 
of food, for example, to Levi, to someone else. So Reuven giving it to Levi as a total gift. And then Vehala Mutarba. And now Levi, since it's his, he can take his plate and give it to Shimon who prohibited from Reuven. Why? Because now Shimon received a gift that belongs to Levi and nothing to do with the vow between Reuven and him. Okay? Here is a story, painful story. Relationship between father and son and its consequences. There is a place in Israel called Beit Horon. It's not necessarily the same location, but here is the story. A fellow that lived there, Unfortunately, the um, father um, either prohibited or was prohibition against driving benefit from his son. Vehaya Masiyad no. And it's a big simcha coming. The, the, the son married the grandson. So obviously, the son wanted his father to participate with the wedding, especially the meal, the feast of the wedding. Ve'amar lechavero, so he have a problem. What's the problem? His father is prohibited to drive benefit from him or vice versa. So he said to someone else, another friend, Guess what? My yard, meaning the place that he have the wedding, for example, in his yard, in his auditorium, in his something that belongs to him, right? So that part and the meal itself Netunim, I'm giving it to you as a gift. Hinan lefanecha, it's now yours. Ela kedeshia vo abba v'yochal imanu basuda. He was honest with his friend, and he said to his friend, "Look, I have issues with my father. Is the issue of vow, prohibition for my father to drive benefit from me. Yet I want dad." to come to my wedding and to eat. So I'm basically transferring, making kinyan, transferring the place that we're going to have the wedding, the wedding wall, hall, and the food, the meal, to you. It's like you are now the owner. And therefore, there is no issue to come here and eat at the wedding. Now, Based on this, it's a several halachi question. Is that a serious manner of transaction or not? But let's first see the end of that story. Amal, the recipient, said to this fellow, he said to him, Im shelihem, areihem mukdashim la shamayim. He says, all right, if this is mine, I am right now contributing whatever you give me to Hashem, to heaven, to, to the te temple Beit HaMikdash, right? To the temple um, maintenance. Meaning, this courtyard and this meal is contributed to the temple maintenance. Let's use names. The father was named Reuven. The son, right? Let's call him David, okay? David is about to marry his son, Shlomo. David has a friend. The friend is called Jonathan. So David is saying to Jonathan, I'm giving you my yard, and I'm giving you the meal as a gift, all right? So my father, Reuven, can come and eat. Jonathan said, guess what? I'm giving now this yard and the food to the temple maintenance. So David said to him, he gets angry. So he said, Amar lo, natati lecha et sheli shetakdishem lashamayim? What's wrong with you? I didn't give it to you in order for you 
to give it to the temple. That wasn't the goal, right? Amar lo, Yonatan said to David, wait a second, if that's the case, natata li et shelcha, ela shetehe ata ve'avicha olchin veshotin. Guess what? You are giving me this for one purpose. You want to circumvent the system. You want to trick the system by what? Having you and your father eating and drinking at the wedding, umitratzin zelaze, and making peace with each other. But you, while you are in violation, while you are prohibited each other, ve'ye avon talui beroshi. And this sin, I'm going to take you guys' sin? You basically want to make me a scapegoat and, and in heaven they're going to punish me for doing this. I'm not going to do that. Alright? You have issue with the vow with your father, solve it with your father. Why you want to use me, right, as a puppet, as something in between you and him. And then you, you have some... Um, 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 you eat and drink with him, you are in violation, and I hold the scene because I was the guy in between. I don't want to do that. I'm, uh, that's the reason why I right away said I'm giving it to the temple. So the sages said, guess what? Kol matana she'ena she'imikdisha matana If someone gives a quote-unquote gift, but it's not a real gift, is a trick, is a sometimes cheating the system in order not to do something that's not considered a gift. So if that gift cannot be contributed to the temple in potential is not considering a gift. For example, let's talk practical. If someone tried to circumvent the taxes by giving a fake gift, right? For example, you know some friends who have some non-profit and you take the money and you give it to a non-profit organization and you set up with your friend that he or she will give you the money back somehow. And meanwhile, you use it as a tax write-off, right? So that's basically you tricking the system. It's called in Ivrit Ha'arama, or in Aramaic Ha'arama Be'alma, which means you basically try to fool around the system, to trick the system. The truth is, you do not give that organization as a gift. You're just using that system in order not to pay something, not to do something, right? So, yes. It is okay to give a gift and said, I'm giving this gift to you, but you cannot consecrate that gift to something else. I'm giving this gift to this yeshiva or to this person, but I'm giving it to you. I don't want you to give it to the hospital. I'm giving it to you. That's okay. As long as it's sincere gift. But if it's quote-unquote fake gift, right, it's a problem, correct? So there's a book called Tvuotcho. Based on that, he asks a question. How do you sell chametz? When you're selling chametz, right, if you're not intent, if you have a box of whiskey or beer in your basement that is total chametz, okay, and you're not intend to sell it so it's not a sale. There are those who hold strictly that it's a problem. You have to get rid of chametz mamash only ta'arovet chametz. It's a serious issue. Rabbi Shochotovitz, for example, in Baltimore, it's a very erudite rabbi in Aguda Springfield, Baltimore. So he writes a very different long, long form of selling chametz. My Chavrusa showed me once that go to all those questions and specifications. It's not like you get this little note and you sign a little paper and goodbye. If you want to do it really seriously, you get rid of a real chametz and you write the list and you do all those restrictions and the non-Jew basically can potentially purchase which happened in Jewish history. That's a sincere sale. 
But again, rabbis prefer ta'arovet chametz, not to clear chametz. But it's based on this discussion as well. So the Gemara said, ma'ase listor. What do you mean by that? The story that you brought here is uh, to contradict what we said in the Mishnah. Um, not everyone hold in that way uh, because that story, according to some, it's not really contradicted the Mishnah. But you see also the Ran ask a question based on that. How do you treat it Arba Taminim? You know on Sukkot, the festival of Sukkot, we have the four species. In the first day, the Torah tells us, Ul kachtem lachem, meaning it has to be yours. In our history, many times is poverty, is a lot of issues that people either cannot afford or cannot have an access. So one person have the Abba So how you do that with the first day of Sukkot? It has to be yours. So he basically make it as a communal Abba and then people, other people can use it. The question is, how you do it in real? The Torah said, Lachem, Mishelachem, it should be used. Chasurei mechasra, vehachri katane. You have to understand the Mishnah, it's like some words are missing. I ve'imochiach. So for al tchilato, but if the incomplete, the, 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 the end, um, the, the end of the word of the giver, proof what he really intend to do. Why? Because you see this story when they start talking and gets angry, how this story ended. He said clearly that he basically wanted all because of his father, right? Asu is prohibited to drive um, um, benefit from those things. Uma senamei beveit choron, and this is a story that happened in the city of Beit Choron. Beechad avas sofor mochiach al tchilato. You see here that um, um, the big question is if he said it very lucidly, very clearly that that's what the intent. So based on this sugiya, the Chebine Rab, Rabbi of Chebin said that we have all these issues of selling the chametz. But the Gemara said, here is limitation of this ruling. Meaning, he told him that the purpose is because I want my dad to be part of the wedding. Which means, he didn't make it as a condition, he gave him as a full gift. He only told him that he wished, he yearned to see his father partake of the meal. So since he intend to give him as a gift, it's already transferred to Yonatan, right? Another option, Lishna Achrina Amrin Allah, Amara Valotei Matama Damar Leivinan Lefanecha Udasu. But show me, the rabbi said, the Ran said, and others, that a person put the money and effort and arrangement and everything in the meal that he intend to give it to his friend. Show me. When that case happened, no one does that, right? That you prepare the meal, you pre you renting or buying the place, you buying all the food, all the arrangement, and then you give it to someone else. So it's basically a ha'arama. It's only to trick the system. Forty-eight. It was a fellow. There's a few versions. What exactly happened? In simple way. The way it was fought, and one said he used to steal sheaves of flax. Others said that he, um, he wasn't behaving properly. So, in short, um, the father was angry at certain behavior of his son, the Meir, he said. He made a vow, prohibited his son to drive benefit from his estate. Amrulei, we have a vow, brach, tzuba, merabanan, hai, mai. 
He says, you know what you're doing? You put a boundaries against your son, but what do you do tomorrow, this son who get married, and have, you have a grandson who is a righteous, pious, God-fearing man, by putting a boundaries against your son, you're basically perpetuating that prohibition. Because you are basically avoiding your sinner son, and then his son cannot use it. Amar lehon liknei haden. So, so it means he takes the, his part that he entitled my estate, but not for himself. Which means if it happens that my grandson will be a Torah scholar, he will receive the estate from his father. Which means he put a condition. It's like you're given an attorney and he said to him, look, if my grandson follows certain path, then he will give it. It's not for my son. It's for my future grandson. When I'll be, not be around, you have to make sure that he is a Torah scholar. Otherwise, don't give him the money. Right? Or don't give him the state. So the Gemara said, my. So what do you do? The son who's not followed the path of his father, not received this gift to himself, or not? So one view, Amri Pumpeditai, the sages of Pumpedita said, Guess what? It's a matter of um, uh, acquiring the property on the condition that you transfer it to your son. So therefore, the whole knell not like not look honey. If you make this condition, so it does not acquire the item, and therefore you have no effect of this statement. However, the Rav Nachman Amar, Kane, said yes, it is a matter of acquisition. Why? The Hasudra, because he give him Kinyan Khalifin, he give him some handkerchief, some clothing, Kne al menat leaknot, who, so this is acquisition in order to transfer the ownership. So therefore, you can confer ownership and transfer it by doing so. The Mara rejected that Amara Vashi, Uman Leimalan, the Sudara Itafis Lei, Lomit Peace, who told you that with this Kinyan Sudar, with this using the clothing, so if the one, the recipient, receive it and re refuse to return, then it's not in effect. The odd, furthermore, Sudra Knal, not like not to Knem in Hashta, which means from now, Halei Sin Deadein. But this, the father of the son who committed sins, when exactly he acquired them? You mean to say only when he have his own son who has followed the path of Torah? So it means you say that it's all conditional. So if that's the case, the cloth has already been returned to its owner. The act of the acquisition taking place long before the grandson became a Torah scholar. So you have no effect of that trans uh, uh, trans uh, action. So it's a book called Chavat Da'at. He has a question based on the discussion of Arba Taminim. You have the four species on Sukkot. First day, Ul Kachtem Lachem, right Elliot? It has yeah. to be yours. So if someone give it to a gift to someone, and he gives him a gift just for five minutes to make the bracha on Abba Saminim, is that in effect? So Chavadat said, no, you can't do that because it's not a real gift. It's not transfer of ownership. Other disputed and said, yes, even for a short time, if you give it to someone as a gift, he can use it. Even later on, you give it back to you. But again, as you see, it's a disputation. Not everyone goes like that because again, the foundation is lachem mishel lachem. It has to be yours. And the moment you're transferring something with your mind that the fellow will give it back to you in a five minutes, for example, Chavad Da'at said that is a problematic based on this sugya. Amar le Rav le Rav Nachman v'ha matnat beit choron d'kneh al nat laknotu Remember we said a story of Beit Horon, that the only reason he did it is he wanted his father to partake of the, of the meal of the, the, his son's wedding. 
And the Mishnah said, this is not a matter of acquisition. So, um, um, how come you use it? So it says, Zilmin, Zimnin, sometimes, guess what? Amarle, sometimes Rav Nachman said to Rava, even you have a matter of confirmation for transferring uh, this, the, the gift of Beit Horon is not considering a gift. Mishum desudato muchachat alav. Because his wedding meal proves about him that he did not truly intend to give the item to the recipient. So therefore, since um, it's not a sincere intent, um, it's not in effect. For sure, the Ritva elaborate. We do not have time. The Zimnim, and sometimes, Amar Lake, Rabbi Yezeri, the Amar Afilu Vitu Asur, you go by Rabbi Yezer, who hold that even sometimes if you are giving, meaning you, 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 you say that, okay, I, I give it, I, I, um, uh, the indulgence is forbidden to someone subject to another, prohibiting him benefit from another. So, so Rav Nachman didn't mean that this rule of the Mishnah speaks about um, um, Levater to give it away, but he used it as an example why Rabbi Eliezer is stringent when it's come to this. Uh, to tell us that the Mishnah, in the Mishnah, that we are stringent when it's come to a matter of vow. Any gift that, that you limited the recipient from contributed, from consecrating it for the temple's uh, um, need, it's not considering a gift because therefore you do not fully transfer the, uh, the, the gift to another party if that party cannot do whatever they wish to. Kola tu yemai, what do you mean by that? Lavla tu ha milta de shamit keife. Here is an example for the son that used to steal sheaves of flax. So he said, Lo, la tuye lishna batra, dishma teide rava. The any gift that include the later version of rava discourse that we mentioned, that the Mishnah alluded that the gift of wearing that feast is valid only when the giver expressly stipulates that he's giving it only that the father should come. But then it's not in effect. So here you see a lot of discussion among the rabbis. For example, as we said earlier, circumventing taxes, especially in the place that is a lot of persecution. It's a problem. Or pidyon aben. What do you do when you have a redeeming of a son? You have a kohen, you give him the five silver coins, and later the kohen return it. So do you the person fulfills his obligation. The Khatam Sofer have a discussion. If a fellow was in search of a Kohen, they have a community of many Kohanim, but he wanted a coin that he knew in advance that this coin will give it back to him, the five shekels, the five silvers. If that basically um, means that he did not intend sincerely to give it, and therefore he did not fulfill the mitzvah of Pidyon Aben, so it was a story about the great rabbis of Hungary. They said it was a fellow that was very, very poor, and he wanted to do Pidyon Aben. So is a coin there. So what did he do with the coin? Listen to this. He gave the coin his talisman to fill in. For sure, there is a value of five silvers. So the question they asked the rabbi, the rabbi, his name is Pnei Mevin, his name of his book, Pnei Mevin. They asked a question, since that fellow, as much as he is poor, right? But he knew in advance that this coin is not going to keep his talis tefillin. He's going to give it back to him, right? Did he fulfill his obligation for redeeming his son by giving the, the five silver coin or substitute for five silver coin with this talis tefillin or not? Especially since he knew in advance that the coin will return it. So it's all based on our sugiya hadran alach hashutafin.
Oh, <laughs> 